Clean is good, sir. All right. Okay. Thanks. A very uh, good morning to all. So I am happy to invite you all at the uh, third keynote session um, uh, as a part of uh, our international conference on IRMAS 2021. In that happy occasion, uh, I am uh, very delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Iraivan uh, Yelambaruthi, Associate Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, University Technology Petronas, Malaysia. Uh, he is going to deliver a lecture on artificial intelligence and robotics, emerging uh, trends. So this will be an eye-opening session for all the research scholars who are working in this uh, field. So I'm going to give a brief, a brief intro about uh, Dr. Iraivan. In a simple... Uh, one minute. Sorry. So Dr. I, uh, Iraivan received his uh, Bachelor of Engineering uh, Honours in Electrical Engineering from University of Technology, Malaysia, UTM, in 1989. And uh, he, got, uh, he obtained his PhD from the Department of uh, Automatic Control and System Engineering, University of Sheffield, uh, the uh, United Kingdom, in 2000. He is currently an Associate Professor at the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, uh, UTP, Malaysia. At UTP, he is attached to the Institute of Health Analytics, where he is actively involved in robotics and automation-related research. His membership in national and international professional bodies include Board of Engineers Malaysia, Institution of Engineers Malaysia, Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, IEEE, uh, IEEE Robotics and Automation Society, IEEE Control System Society, and International Federation of Automatic Control, uh, etc. So prior to joining UGP, he was worked at University uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, France Institute, uh, Standards and Industrial Research Institute of uh, Malaysia, and UMW Industrial Power. So uh, we, we are very happy to have you, sir. So we are looking forward to hear your uh, lecture. So over to you, uh, Dr. Iraiman Yelam. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Dagdeeswaran. Okay, uh, good morning to uh, Prof. Dagdeeswaran, uh, Dr. Saravana Kumar, uh, the, all the organizers of this uh, uh, conference, uh, distinguished guests, and all the attendees. Okay, today I will start with the title here first, right? It's Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, Emerging Trends. So, I have divided this talk into three parts, okay? Uh, in part one, I will go through with you the preliminaries uh, in terms of AI and robotics. Okay, in terms of AI, I'm sure everyone knows this, but I wanted to put up here just to, you know, have a recap of what's happening, you know, uh, or trying to understand uh, these terminologies, okay? So basically, AI um, can be construed as computer systems that simulate human intelligence processing, okay? including uh, learning, reasoning, and self-correction. And cognitive computing finds solutions to complex situations where uh, answers uh, might be ambiguous and uncertain. And the type of uh, things that involves AI would be logic reasoning, natural language processing, computer vision, robotics. And you know, machine learning is a subset of AI. And if you know that computer systems that learn by generalizing data examples without relying on rule-based programming. So uh, this is in terms of machine learning. And you know we can categorize it into supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And if you look at the, the kind of uh, areas you know, uh, where machine learning is, is being deployed here in terms of virtual assistance, email spam and malware filtering, product recommendation, self-driving cars, etc. I will show you more uh, examples later on in terms of applications. And if you look at a deep learning, uh, this is another subset of AI where you notice that this is construed as large neural networks and huge amounts of data, create a hierarchy of models which allows computers to learn complicated concepts by building them out of simpler ones. And the type of things that we are looking at are automatic machine translation, object classification in photos, image caption generation, automatic game playing, and so on. Okay, this is uh, the, the gist of what we are looking at in terms of AI. And if you look at the growth of AI you know, over the years, okay, uh, you, you'll notice that you know, uh, we have a graph here which shows 
the usage in terms of exabytes per month, okay, uh, versus the year, okay, and a survey conducted by Deloitte in 2018 concluded that 60% of the companies were using AI algorithms. So when we say AI here, you know, that obviously includes um, machine learning and also the deep learning methods. Again, you know, uh, according to Cisco report on visual index forecast, uh, global internet traffic is predicted to increase from 250 exabytes per month in 2020 to 400 exabytes per month in 2022. So this shows that, you know, there is a tremendous growth, okay, in terms of the AI applications or the usage. To, you know, uh, kind of summarize the kind of AI models, uh, basically what I've given here is on machine learning algorithms. There are several algorithms like SVM, KNN, decision trees, ensemble methods, neural networks, k-means, okay? which you can also see that, you know, they have been uh, categorized here in terms of its type, which is either supervised or unsupervised. And where is it being used? You know, is it being used in regression, classification, or clustering? So, you know, uh, there are few, like SVM, you know, it's being used for regression and classification and not for clustering. And if you look at k-means, the, the last one here, it is not being used for regression and classification. On the other hand, it is being used in clustering. So like that, you know, there are uh, uh, various ways we can apply these algorithms for different functions. Now, let me uh, dive into robotics. Uh, okay, um, everyone knows the term robot was coined by the Czech playwright uh, Chapek, okay, from the Czech word, which is known for forced labor or surf. Okay, so obviously, you know, the, uh, the different definitions are given by uh, uh, different um, associations. So I would like to go straight to the reason definition, which is a robot is an autonomous machine capable of sensing its environment, carrying out computations to make decisions and performing actions in the real world. Okay, so uh, we will look at there are uh, different types of robots with different tasks. So we will look at it later. Okay, so these are the types of robots. I will, I'm going to glance through this, okay, uh, in terms of the field and then the, the type of robots that's being used here, okay. So if you look at uh, number one, aerospace, uh, NASA's robonaut has been uh, created and it has been used. And if you talk about consumer, uh, Roomba vacuum is a very famous one where people use it, you know, uh, in the uh, house uh, for vacuuming, eh? okay? And then if you look at education, uh, Lego sets are being used in some of the universities, even, but you know, in developed countries, they are being used even at primary and secondary schools, okay? And we have disaster response, we have a rescue robot. And if you look at uh, drones or UAVs, we can uh, look at Global Hawk as one of the example. Okay, I'm just giving uh, one example only, eh? not uh, there are, obviously there are several examples which you can look up. And if you look at underwater, deep sea submersible uh, aquanaut is, has been developed. And if you look at industrial robots, there are many types, KUKA, you know, we have Stobli, we have uh, ABB and so on. But uh, Unimat is one of the uh, interesting robots because this Unimat does not need programming unlike other robots, you know, uh, this uh, can be self-programmed, uh, not say self-programmed, it can be taught to make the necessary movements, okay? So it is a unique uh, way of uh, uh, moving, okay? Now, in terms of military, you know, uh, the big dog is being used. Uh, in, in telepresence, we look at robot avatar, self-driving cars, or Toyota Prius. And if you look at research, uh, obviously for robotics metrology, is being used for jet engines, uh, for entertainment, something called partner robot, uh, humanoids, uh, the Sophia robot is, is the reason one, you know, and for medical, the Da Vinci surgical robot is very famous. And for exoskeleton, we have several models, okay, which uh, we can see later on. These are type of robots. So in part one, what we looked at is you know, the, the definitions of AI and then the types of robots, you know, 
And now in part two, we're going to look at the AI and robotics applications. So what I've done here is that, you know, I would like to share uh, the applications separately first for AI and as well as uh, robotics applications separately first. And then later on, we will see how both of them, you know, come together, how these are being integrated, how the AI is being integrated into applic robotics applications. And we will look at some examples. So in terms of AI, uh, I'm trying to zoom in into biomedical applications here. Okay, I want to share this information. There are about 10 uh, different types of uh, areas that we will, I'll be sharing with you today. Okay, um, number one is identifying diseases and diagnosis, drug discovery and manufacturing, medical imaging diagnosis, personalized medicine, machine learning based behavioral modification, smart health records, clinical trial and research, uh, crowdsourced data collection, uh, better radiotherapy and outbreak prediction. If you look at the number 10, uh, outbreak prediction, I think this is the, the most relevant for us today, you know, where uh, the COVID-19, you know, uh, pandemic uh, is, is being predicted, you know, uh, in terms of uh, the prevalence and whatnot, okay, currently. Okay, so let's look at individually one by one. Okay, uh, when we look at identifying uh, diseases and diagnosis, okay, uh, basically, you know, one of the reason ones is the IBM Watson genomics, okay, uh, where they are integrating the cognitive computing with genome-based tumor sequencing. Okay, so this is to identify the disease, okay, so that a, a proper diagnosis can be carried out. Now, if you look at drug discovery and manufacturing, so all these uh, that I'm, I'm sharing with you today is all AI-based applications, okay? Now, uh, in drug discovery and manufacturing, the, the project Hanover developed by Microsoft is about developing AI-based technology for cancer treatment and personalizing drug combination, okay? Uh, basically, this is for leukemia. So uh, how does it work and all that? You know, that, that is... Uh, beyond our, our talk today, but these are the, some of the developments that's going on. Eh? Now, let us look at medical imaging diagnosis. Okay, um, the work that is being developed by Microsoft for looking at the inner eye, okay, uh, uh, initiative, eh? the, the, the project, okay, uh, is again a, a diagnostic tool for image analysis. Okay, um, then if you look at personalized medicine, Okay, um, IBM Watson Oncology is at the forefront of AI, okay, uh, where it is able to leverage on the patient medical history to help generate multiple treatment options. So when we say personalized medicine here, okay, we are looking at, you know, uh, a person who's having different types of diseases uh, and how can this treatment options, you know, can be given to them, okay? This is done by the IBM Watson Oncology. And moving on, uh, if you look at machine learning based behavioral modification, okay, um, behavioral modification is an important part of preventive medicine, okay? So in this, you know, when we say preventive, we are looking at cancer prevention, okay, identification and patient treatment. For this, uh, the somatics is a B2B to see based data analytics company, yeah, which has released uh, an ML based application to recognize gestures, which we make in our daily lives. Okay. And allowing us to understand our unconscious behavior and make necessary changes. So this is a gesture based uh, recognition system. Okay. See, there are various types of uh, things are being explored. Okay since AI is able to uh, give us a, a variety of uh, capabilities. So moving on, if you look at number six, smart health records. Okay, and you know, currently maintaining up-to-date health records is a very exhaustive process. Okay, and MIT uh, in US, you know, they are currently developing a cutting edge system okay for smart health records 
which will you know incorporate uh, machine learning yeah, ai based systems to help with diagnosis clinical treatment uh, and follow ups and just to uh, you know uh, since we are on the smart health records you know just to share with you in some of uh, our hospitals in malaysia and, and i'm sure uh, in india as well right you know uh, no nowadays you know uh, all our records are stored electronically so even when you meet up with the uh, doctors okay and when you go through various tests all our records are now uh, digitally stored and you know it it is can be retrieved by the doctors uh, you know uh, through the computer and to discuss with the patients on the diagnosis so it's no longer you know uh, we have to run from one department to another you know like if those days you know we had x-rays in one department uh, and then you know the blood records will be in another department you know we have to uh, somebody has to go around you know and and fetching all these files you know to be put into one file which will later be looked up by the doctors but it is no longer there okay it's all electronics so it's very good okay and it's fast now looking at number seven clinical trial and research okay um, obviously clinical trial costs a lot of time and money okay and can take years to complete in many cases okay so uh, by applying ai based predictive analytics to identify potential clinical trial candidates can help researchers draw a pool from a variety of data points such as previous do doctor visits, social media, etc., and and I th I believe you know the the current clinical trials that that was carried out or still being carried out for uh, COVID, uh, you know, I, in in my view, you know, I'm I'm sure they would have used some sort of AI based predictive uh, methods. Okay, um, now uh, if you look at the crowdsourced data collection, okay. Now, it is about you know, allowing researchers and practitioners to access a vast amount of information uploaded by people on their own consent. Okay, so th this is important when, when we distinguish between uh, patient records and crowdsourced data collection. Okay, uh, this live health data has uh, great ramifications okay, in the way medicine is being perceived eh, down the line. So one of the, the reason ones is the Apple's research kit, which allows uh, access to interactive applications where we are able to give uh, information and they are using AI based facial recognition to treat um, Asperger's or, or Parkinson's disease. Okay, so uh, they have also, uh, um, you know, uh, if, if you look at uh, IBM, okay, they have partnered with Medtronics to also look at the diabetes and insulin data in real time. So these are the two different. Uh, things that's uh, happening now okay okay uh, let's move on uh, i have two more in terms of the ai applications uh, number 9 would be better radiotherapy okay so medical image analysis has many discrete variables which can arise at any moment of time okay uh, obviously you know when we look at uh, we have worked on uh, some projects where you know uh, if we have used ultrasound uh, imaging uh, x rays where you know it is being used to look at uh, lesions cancer okay uh, 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 tumors okay and and so on okay so using a ai based algorithms you know uh, we'll be able to decipher okay and and also segment certain areas and then from there we can also classify the type of uh, uh, what do you call that the the lesions or or, or tumor okay so uh, this has happened before and in, in our case, you know, uh, two of the projects that we worked on uh, was looking at the uh, ankle uh, ligament tear problem and also the supraspinatus tendon, you know, shoulder tendon uh, problem where, you know, it, it, it often has tendinosis, tear, calcification kind of problems, which we are, we are able to uh, classify them. You know, first we need to, you know, get the image and then try to do the proper segmentation. Uh, we carry on with classification using some sort of algorithms, AI-based algorithms, which we will then be able to classify either is, you know, it's a tear, it's, it's tendinosis or calcification and so on, okay? Um, the other one is the outbreak, outbreak prediction, which I just mentioned just now, that this is the reason one would be the, the current pandemic, okay? It is being used 
but in Malaysia, you know, um, uh, dengue is something that is quite prevalent in Malaysia. Okay, because we are a, a tropical country, you know, in terms of uh, rain, you know, uh, if it's a rainy season and and whatnot, then you know we have issues with dengue. So what uh, the government has done is that you know it's come up with uh, AI based prediction system where if somebody is diagnosed with dengue at a particular hospital, you know, this information is sent uh, to a central uh, database. And from there, the health authorities will take uh, proper steps, you know, uh, in, in mitigation uh, steps. But that data also gives, uh, what do you call that, uh, some information, you know, for the health authorities to predict, you know, whether, you know, uh, a case in this area, you know, region one is increasing, you know, and, and how is it going to affect the surrounding areas and, and so on. So, you know, in, before it can happen in the surrounding areas, they can go in and then take the necessary steps to uh, reduce uh, or, or even prevent if, if it's possible. Okay, these are all AI-based applications, okay? So now let me share with you some of the uh, robotics applications. Uh, and before that, I will uh, try to relate in terms of the health issue, okay? So what we are looking at is, uh, is in terms of stroke, okay, where, you know, uh, it is increasing, stroke is increasing uh, among the population in the world. And obviously, you know, um, it has, the world, world Health Organization defines stroke as the interruption of the blood supply to the brain, usually because a blood vessel bursts or it is blocked by a clot, okay? This cuts off the supply of oxygen and nutrients and causing damage to the brain tissue. So this is the definition uh, given by WHO. And you know sometimes they have also included this as a part of the cardiovascular disease subgroup. Okay, and if we look at the statistics here, you know uh, it is estimated. Okay, this is uh, a previous data: uh, 6.2 million people died from stroke in 2017, and it is expected to increase. Okay, um, this is the, the prevalent uh, graph that is showing that. Now, once a person gets a stroke, you know, in terms of recovery, okay, 10% uh, of stroke survivors recover almost completely, 25% recover with minor impairments, 40% uh, experience moderate to severe impairment requiring special care, 10% require care within uh, either a skilled care and other long-term care facility, okay? And unfortunately, 15% uh, die shortly after the stroke. So what we are interested, you know, when it comes to uh, stroke recovery uh, using technology, you know, uh, is it possible for us to look at this 40%, okay, of the population, okay? So obviously, um, this 25% uh, with minor impairments, might need some initial training, okay? Um, initial uh, therapy. But uh, the bulk of it, you know, would be on the 40%. And uh, addressing this 10% uh, is a bit difficult using the technology because, you know, uh, currently we don't have uh, enough information uh, that uh, to show that, you know, this 10% has been attended to using technology. So what technology are we talking about here? Okay, uh, before we move on to the type of technology, then let us look at the type of rehabilitation. Okay, so obviously the first step is to have a physical therapy. Okay, so they get the people to walk, you know, look at the range of movement. Okay, and then occupational therapy, OT, is taking care of oneself. Okay, uh, probably in a home setting. And it also involves a speech language therapy, communication skill, swallowing, you know, cognitions, and so on, and recreational therapy, cooking, gardening, and all that, okay? So all this involves, you know, a manual intervention by some uh, form of, or, or by, you know, um, uh, rehabilitation experts, okay? Now, by introducing technology, okay, so we would like to see, you know, what kind of benefits can be draw from this, okay? So technology can provide real-time feedback, okay? And is able to give us objective measurements. We're able to monitor the progress. We are able to track the outcome, okay? 
Okay, I can give an example here, you know, where uh, if somebody has uh, lost their functionality, say, uh, in, in hand, okay, or, or arm. So we have uh, devices where we can get them into the ther therapy, okay, or rehabilitation, but we can use the EMG electrodes to measure the uh, muscle strength. But most often nowadays, you know, uh, if we don't, Go into technology what they do is is they are looking at only the functional recovery rather than having objective measurements which can be quantified through some sort of you know uh, uh, method okay now uh, again um, if you look at the uh, other reasons okay um, it should be motivating it should be engaging and stimulating and if possible uh, errorless learning okay when we say motivating engaging and st stimulating okay so uh, as I mentioned just now, for arm rehabilitation, if we use an interactive uh, gaming system, okay, together with the rehabilitation device, this, you know, it, it really makes the, the patient, you know, to be really engaged and then, you know, uh, motivated. Otherwise, you know, uh, uh, it will be very stale for them. Okay. So um, the three crucial elements uh, of the, uh, for the acquisition of motor programs to rehab are, adequate feedback, okay, variability of practice, and design of learning situation. So what it means is that, you know, uh, every time somebody is, is doing something, you know, they would like to know uh, whether they're progressing or not, okay? And that is important, you know, we have to give uh, immediate uh, results to them, okay? Variability of practice, you know, we have different types of uh, games where the patients can engage. Okay, uh, instead of just having one type of game, you know, there are many types of games. So we have to give the variability to them, you know, so that they don't get bored. Okay, so, uh, and also when we look at the learning situation, you know, uh, we must make sure that, you know, some, some of the learning situation are suitable for them. Say, for instance, you know, uh, when we have uh, a shopping cart, a, a game called shopping cart, where the patient is able to push the trolley and then, you know, pick. Uh, some items from the tray, you know. Uh, now, this is uh, actually using a robotics device that is more suitable for women, okay? Uh, so they, they can relate, okay? Uh, if, it's, if it's a man, you know, we are looking at some sort of uh, like badminton game or, or something like that, you know, they are, where they are, they are able to apply, you know, uh, a very slow stroke kind of thing, you know? So this is where we talk about the design of learning situation. So let's look at uh, the, again, you know, some of the statistics in terms of rehabilitation robotics market. As I mentioned, as the stroke uh, uh, cases are increasing, okay, and the robotics market uh, for rehabilitation is also increasing, okay? Uh, there are many players in the market and many devices are being developed. So some of the devices, devices are like body support device, exercise equipment, mobility equipment, okay? Daily living aids. So you will notice that, you know, from 2014 to 2025, you know, uh, it, is, it is increasing, you know, we don't see it ever decreasing, okay? And we are looking at in terms of uh, billions of USD, you know, in terms of the market potential, huh? okay? Uh, in, for the rehabilitation robotics. Now, some of the uh, top players in, in the world for uh, robotics rehabilitation, uh, like Alter G, Bionic, Exobionics, Miomo, okay, Okuma, Focal Meditech, Honda Moto, uh, and so on, okay. Uh, I'm going to share with you, okay, uh, about four uh, different types of rehabilitation uh, robotics technologies, okay. So, um, number one would be the flexible self-powered knee sensor for rehab monitoring. Then we have the Raphael Smart Glove, Hand of Hope, and Indigo Exoskeleton. So let's uh, look at them now. Okay. So this is the uh, flexible self-powered knee sensor for rehab monitoring. This was developed at the University of Waterloo in, in Canada, where you know they have developed a self-powered knee sensor. So uh, to help monitor patients undergoing rehabilitation therapy. 
okay uh, and uh, you know this is the the picture showing how you know electricity is being generated using electromagnetism you know uh, and that will be able to give the signals to the uh, device okay so it is able to continuously monitor the uh, the patient's uh, rehab aspects okay so that's one and if you look at a Raphael smart glove, this is a high-tech rehab device that helps stroke patients improve their hand movements. Okay, uh, if you notice, when we say hand, uh, we are talking about the fingers. Okay, so they can uh, practice uh, the the patients uh, can practice the uh, some sort of hand exercises and uh, try to improve their uh, dexterity. Okay, over over time. Um, now, the third one, uh, Hand of Hope. Hand of Hope uh, therapy device is used for neuromuscular rehabilitation of the hand. Okay. Uh, you know, the way this uh, is, is being actuated, you know, uh, obviously we, we have uh, the EMG signal first is detected, you know, uh, in terms of the signal strength of the fingers. Then, you know, uh, that is in as is being used as an input to activate the actuators okay so i have uh, had a liberty to uh, look at a demo uh, a live demo you know in malaysia and this product is from sorry from uh, hong kong and you know uh, it is truly a remarkable device which can really help the patients to recover okay so and let me uh, Go to the last one here is the indigo uh, exoskeleton okay so this is for gait training okay uh, it comes in two versions the personal indigo personal and indigo therapy okay so it is being uh, tested uh, in various facilities currently now with that what i have done so far we've looked at you know uh, the ai application separately and also the robotics applications separately okay now let us see how can we you know bring these two together is there an overlap you know uh, between the robotics and ai so if you look at this uh, when uh, diagram here you know uh, obviously you know uh, in, in the field of robotics uh, that is being increasingly you know overlapping with the use of artificial intelligence so the overlapping uh, applications or products you know we can define it as artificial uh, artificially intelligent robots okay so this is the bridge between these two uh, uh, field eh, robotics and ai and you'll notice that you know uh, even though you know there are many industrial robots you know currently they are not really uh, intelligent you know they have to be programmed you know uh, uh, for re repetitive work and whatnot okay but then increasingly some of the algorithms that's that are being used okay uh, in ai is now being adapted into robotics so let's look at a um, few examples okay so i will look in terms of the i would like to share in terms of the field so in in terms of agriculture and farming okay so there is this uh Autonomous electric tracker, uh, which is by Dairy, okay, it uses next generation technology with advanced robotics, machine learning, computer vision, okay, and so on eh, to distinguish between crop and weed. Okay, they're able to do that. Okay, and also on top of that, uh, on on top of that, you know, they are using uh, big data to help uh, farmers to deliver better crops. Okay, so they look at in terms of uh, how they can use the web-based tools. To create, you know, maps, okay, uh, and see how fertilizers can be uh, used in that particular area. Okay, for that, you know, uh, I would like to share a video here. Okay, let me go out first from the presentation. I'll come back. I would like to share a video. It is self-explanatory.
Okay, so I'm, I'll go back to the PowerPoint again. Okay, so that was the first video. Uh, Dr. Saravana Kumar can see it just now, eh, the video? Yes, sir, sir, everything okay. is. All right, okay. So let's uh, go to the second one, okay? So um, this is about retail and shopping, okay? Uh, there is some, uh, this video called uh, Lovebot, okay? A shopping robot where customers can ask Lovebot by speaking or using the touch screen to find items in the store, okay? And this robot also performs real-time inventory tracking, uh, you know, as it cruises down the aisle, okay? And, and sometimes, you know, uh, or most often this kind of information is, is important for the uh, retailers to, to identify and, you know, uh, to see what kind of merchandise is moving fast and uh, when to replace them and whatnot, okay? So now let us look at this love uh, robot, a short video as well. You want to make your home better. Our job is to help you. So we're building new tools that help our associates help you better. We partnered with fellow robots to bring you Lobot. We spent close to two years honing Lobot, and soon it'll be coming to select low stores to help you. Hi, I'm looking for some paint. Need to find something? Lobot can show you and in multiple languages. Lobot also helps our team by constantly monitoring inventory, giving us daily feedback about what is in stock in the store. All of this allows our staff to focus on what they do best, helping you. Okay, so I'll I'll move back to the presentation. So th those are the two videos that we saw, you know, in terms of uh, number one is the agriculture and farming area and retail and shopping, okay, where these are all uh, intelligent uh, robotic systems, okay? Now, the third area is construction forestry, okay? There is something called the Caspri Autonomous Drone that is that has been developed and in being used, okay, uh, in trying to, come up with the aerial view of a, a forest or even construction site and give information back uh, to the uh, engineers, okay? Uh, in this case, you know, uh, this particular uh, drone here is, is a one-dimensional forward-facing leader, which has forward-facing leader sensors that help the robot to avoid obstacles like trees, cell towers, and other structures, okay? And it is, you know, able to create models uh, which are very accurate within centimeters okay and because it has the ai built into it you know uh, in the system and it is able to serve the specific users where be it construction be it forestry and whatnot okay and uh, let's look at the uh, the last one here is the security and surveillance system this is the s5 solar powered security surveillance robot okay and it is uh, able to be used uh, at, you know, outdoor uh, environment, you know, for surveillance purposes. And since it has solar powered, okay, it is able to uh, power up, you know, on its own and uh, without having to have uh, external charging. And, you know, it is always able to provide information, you know, through intelligence system. Okay. Uh, so, this has the combination of AI for two purposes. One is for self-charging, okay? And then the other one is to provide information back to the control uh, tower or system. Okay, I, th I think, you know, I have a few more slides, you know, I will hurry up here, okay? So I've uh, almost done uh, 43 minutes. Okay, uh, in part three, I would like to share with you some of our research projects i will glance through that we have been carrying out at our university so earlier on you know i was giving you some uh, a broad area of applications and definitions of what is happening you know uh, around the world okay and let me share with you specifically what we are doing so i have four projects i will go through very fast okay project one is a biomechanical investigation of gate analysis on lower extremities 
Okay, basically, you know, this project involves the use of, you know, machine learning algorithms to classify. Okay, so when we talk about biomechanical investigation of gait analysis, we are talking about, you know, uh, human movement, gait analysis, okay. Obviously, you know, uh, it comes under a big, a big uh, umbrella called human activity recognition, HAR. Uh, it can be used, uh, you know, uh, for biometrics, disease diagnosis, rehabilitation, sports, and whatnot. But let me go specifically to uh, what we have done. Okay, so uh, obviously the human daily activities you can also categorize into gesture, low level, and high level activities. Okay, like low level can be known as sitting, standing, running. High level is on working at office, cleaning the house, sightseeing, and all that. And some of the variables, uh, variable sensors are being used to to collect the data. Okay, so now. What we have done, okay, actually, you know, uh, the two things that we have done, you know, uh, number one, we have done the classification based on the existing data, which is the UCI machine learning repository data. Uh, we have used two different data sets. And then the second part was, you know, we carried out some experiments on our own, which I'm not sharing it here, okay. Now, the kind of uh, activities that I mentioned just now, we categorize it into different uh, uh, labeling. And then, you know, we carry out the process, which is the, you know, before we go to the classification, we have to go through the earlier process in terms of filtration, feature extraction and whatnot, okay? And we have used uh, uh, several uh, ensemble algorithms from the machine learning uh, family and the performance matrix we have used is a quite standard one. And, you know, we are here sharing with you the overall accuracy. So if you, if you notice that, you know, uh, for different, different algorithms, different accuracies were uh, obtain and then you know the two methods of uh, carrying out the classification one is we call it holdout method probably some of you are working in this area are familiar with this and then the other one is the cross validation k cross validation in, in this case we use the tenfold cross validation method and we found that you know one of the uh, algorithms you know in this case the random subspace were giving a better accuracy so similarly for database two we were able to get some results okay uh, and random subspace were giving the better results now, uh, I, I think I have kind of summarized that. Let me go to the second project. Uh, okay, the one is on machine learning, okay? This is, a, that is an individual thing, you know, it does not involve robotics. Now, I'm gonna share with you the robotics project by itself without any machine learning, okay? So uh, this is the Okuma machine we have for uh, upper arm rehab, okay? With interactive uh, games. And, you know, we had about, 15 uh, healthy subjects from university where you know we wanted to test uh, you know the uh, the right-handed and then left-handed people uh, and also both-handed so we had about six male students you know uh, with three right-handed and three left-handed six female students three right-handed and three left-handed and three male students were both-handed so we wanted to see the variations you know if there are any variations when they use this rehab device with the interactive uh, gaming system, okay. So uh, some of the findings uh, uh, is that obviously, you know, uh, the range of motion. Okay, what are we measuring? We are measuring the range of motion, and those if they are right-handed people, okay, uh, obviously the range of motion is higher. Okay, if they are left-handed, it is also higher for them. So it is uh, regardless of gender. Okay, now. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, uh, range of motion for both handed, the difference were not much. So that shows that, you know, there's an equal, uh, what do you call that, strength, you know, for both handed people in terms of range of motion. Okay, uh, so I, I think that is the summary that I've given you. Now I'll go on to the uh, third project, okay. This is the multimodal approach for controlling lower limb exoskeleton, okay. So project three here is basically we are looking at signals and also AI algorithms, which we can use for fourth project, which I will discuss with you in a short while. Okay, uh, in this, we are looking at EEG signals, the FNIR signals, and also the EMG signals. And we try to find the optimal localization for EEG and FNIRs in the uh, uh, brain, okay? And we will use that together with the EMG signal for rehab purposes, okay? Now, in this, uh, we carried out for a lower limb, Okay, and we were looking at uh, the type of uh, signals that we can uh, classify. Okay, so in this, 
we looked at you know uh, the uh, three different uh, classifiers NBKN and NL LDA on both the EMG and the EEG FNIRS combined signals, and we were able to find that the LDA classifier were able to outperform the rest. Now, so for this project, you know, it shows that the one of the machine learning algorithms, you know, uh, can be used for classification purposes. And if I look at the project four, okay, which is basically uh, upper arm exoskeleton development, okay, a, a prototype was developed together with the serious games, interactive games. And uh, this is the first version line, you know, that's why it's a bit bulky. And let me share with you the video. Okay, before I share with you the video, okay, I just want to tell you that what we are planning, we have done the machine learning classification, you know, for using EEG, FNIS and EMG for the lower limb, okay? And we will go to adapt that into upper limb uh, for this particular exoskeleton. So this would be more like, you know, an uh, intelligent uh, robotic system, okay? Where this is a third category where we are combining the machine learning algorithm with the robotic system. So let me share with you briefly the workings of this. Uh, it, it, it won't take long, okay? Okay, uh, this is where, you know, the, the, the student is trying to wear the uh, exoskeleton before that he has put in some kind of sensors okay and it's done okay let me go to the second one and he's trying to uh, wear it now as i mentioned it's a bit bulky first version okay obviously you know it has straps mm -hmm. and it is a motorized uh, exoskeleton eh, for upper arm and we are using a, a flat motor, a flat Maxon motor, EC90, to be very specific. Okay. Okay. And then the the last uh, video would be this. Okay. So this shows the the movement, and the serious game, you know, have been you know deployed in a handphone uh, which goes into the a virtual box here lah okay and then all right okay so i'll go back to the presentation okay i've come to the end of the presentation let me so these are the videos that i've shared with you okay uh, before I, I leave uh, you know or rather complete my presentation today i would like to uh, you know introduce this Camphy Vision Innovations, an AI-driven video analytics company which is based in Bangalore, okay, or Bengaluru eh, currently, okay. So basically, you know, um, uh, what they are involved in is, uh, uh, you know, in facial recognition, retail analytics, traffic management, intelligent video analytics, ad analysis, and smart city, okay. Now, the the you might be wondering why am I, uh, you know, talking about this company when there are you know, probably uh, hundreds of companies in, in India, I suppose, you know, who are involved in AI based things. Okay, basically, this is a startup company by my former student. Okay, uh, he was a PhD scholar at University of Technology Petronas. And, you know, uh, after graduating, he worked for two companies. And finally, he started his own company, which is called the uh, Camphy Vision. And, and they are involved in AI. So since our talk today is about AI, you know, I thought of probably sharing this that a success story, you know, where if you get involved, you know, in AI based system, you know, th there is a huge potential, you know, yeah. so let me just go to the website. Okay, uh, I would like to share just one or two minutes, then we will be done with that. Okay. Um, Please, please bear with me. Okay, I'm trying to go to Camp Vision here. Um, So can you see now? Uh, can you all see the the video? I mean the the website. 
Okay, sir. Okay, okay, all right. So you know, uh, if you 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 can look at you know uh, in this website where, uh, in fact, we are working with them now in on on a project on on uh, number plate recognition system. Okay, they have many many uh, areas that they are working on currently, and I think you know this will be a, a good, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, opportunity for everyone who are interested in developing some sort of uh, AI thing. And I, I think for for uh, Sir Jagadish Suren and uh, uh, Sir Sarano Kumar, you know, if you can also engage with them, you know, for uh, any internship for your students, you know, so there is a possibility that you know you can work with them. Okay, I think that's about it uh, on 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 the video uh, on the thing. Okay, let me go back and uh, okay. With that, I would like to thank you. Okay, Nandri. So open for any Q and A. Thank you, sir, and thank you to the audience. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for sharing all your research uh, areas. The session is open for uh, discussion. But from participant side, if you have any queries, you can uh, ask. Sir, good morning, sir. This is Dr. Murli. Okay, sure. Good it morning, was a very good presentation, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a nice. Uh, thought-provoking a uh, lot of uh, concepts that you have revealed. So right. in, in, with regard to this autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. so whether this uh, motion control would be more appropriate through GPS or through vision systems, sir? Okay. Um, motion control, eh? Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, I think, you know, uh, if, if you're, you're talking about, uh, 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 um, you know, uneven terrain, or your so the normal okay. trail, like that the video you have shown right for a, a mm. tractor okay All right okay so here the motion is it's a kind of a guided motion or it is fully autonomous you know for for the tractor at the moment you know it is not autonomous okay what what i meant there was you know using a tractor with uh, you know intelligence built in you know for them to be able to uh, you know uh, look at the the, the plowing uh, land size and you know and and what not but the one that 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 the drone, you know, for drone, okay, uh, basically, you know, uh, it is having dual system. One is using the GPS guided system, okay, together together with the uh, lidar sensors to avoid uh, any uh, obstacles. Okay, so that that is being used uh, through GPS, but not for the tractor. But coming back to your question on uh, any autonomous robot, isn't it? Okay, so. Um, I would say, you know, uh, going with the vision system would be a better solution because of immediate, uh, you know, uh, navigation, okay, or, 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 or information processing, okay. And if if it's if you're looking at a, a local area, you know, uh, and so I, I think you know a GPS, it is not uh, uh, that uh, viable, you know, in terms of. Uh, in, indoor navigation and all that. Okay, so th that's maybe that's the response view. would be uh, response time would, would take time, right? Yeah, obviously, obviously, the you know the, there'll be a, a delay and all that. Yeah. Yes, but I think that that probably can be overcome. You know, uh, in, in looking at the, the the technology part. You know, so I I think uh, depends on the communication aspects, right? Okay. Okay. Any other Thank questions? You, okay, Thank sure. With uh, autonomous vehicles, there are like, uh, for example, delivery systems. Mm -hmm. uh, how will you ensure the protection of the package and, uh, the, uh, and the robot itself, the autonomous robot itself, when it's on the road? Uh, you, you, uh, excuse me, you, you are talking about uh, uh, an autonomous robot that, that goes... Yeah, like an auto autonomous drone. Say, suppose like... Okay, drones, yeah. Okay. As, uh, you know, research going on for delivery systems through drone. Yes, yes, yes. So protection of drone and the package itself. Is there any research on that? At, at the moment, you know, I, I, I think, you know, uh, probably if you want to protect the, the product, you know, and I think uh, probably you, you got to look at a better packaging, lah, you know, I'm, I'm not very sure on that, okay. But uh, the protect of the drone, you know, what do you mean by that? I, I don't understand the question. Like, uh, hmm. Say, suppose someone wants to, you know, steal the package or something like that. Uh -huh, okay. They'll have to break the drone and take it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. Uh, we have to ensure the 
safety of the, like we should ensure that no one does that sort of thing ah okay uh, this this is uh, new to me la. you know it's a very thought provoking question you know i'm i'm sorry i'm unable to answer that you know uh, probably probably I, i need to dig further you know if i find an answer you know i i'll probably i'll communicate with dr saravana kumar and maybe he can convey the message to the the person who's asking okay i'm i'm sorry about that okay, okay so yeah yeah thanks uh i think uh, we have come to the end of the session uh, so even if there are any further questions uh, we are running short of time so i think uh, we can uh, get this doubts clarified through other means as you can write to us uh, we can get it clarified later or you can just uh, write directly to dr iravan uh, his uh, email address is visible in his uh, Uh, website so you can just search it and uh, do it up so since we are running short of time we are very sorry to say that i just uh, we wanted to sorry sir we are just going to start the session by uh, right now 10 o'clock so okay. we couldn't be able to uh, okay. start it that uh, sir jagdish sir uh, can you conclude yes sir yeah please uh, thank you sir on behalf of the uh, entire uh, eig family and also on behalf of uh, the organizing committee of irmas 2021 uh, we are we would like to convey our heartfelt thanks uh, for uh, coming virtually and sharing all your uh, research ideas for us thanks for uh, sharing the uh, most elaborated fundamental uh, and also details about robots and its application also you have demonstrated the robotics and uh, the application of ai in robotics uh, is very nicely and this will be uh, very helpful for the researchers who are doing the research in this uh, particular field, field of uh, research and also thanks for sharing uh, your uh, research work uh, which will be motivate our uh, young uh, researchers or uh, and the delegates for working in this area so definitely this will be an eye opening session so on behalf of all i uh, uh, thank dr iravan for coming and sharing uh, ideas uh, thank you sir thank you very much okay uh, can i say something <laughs> yes sir sure yes, all sir. right okay i would like to uh, convey my heartfelt uh, thanks to the organizers of this uh, conference you know from vit uh, especially dr jagdish suren and dr saravana kumar for giving me the opportunity you know uh, to share some of uh, our, our things here okay i'll i'll be glad you know to uh, you know carry on with other things you know if you all wish to contact me no issue yes. all right yes. thanks again okay thank you for yes. this opportunity thank, thank you sir thank you. Thank, you. Okay. Sure. thank you sir thank you very much sir. all right thank you we'll so come back uh, to you. right yes, so we can end the session now uh, yes we sir i leave. think uh, all right we can leave sir. i think okay. uh, we have okay. some uh, certain uh, communication to the uh, participants Okay sure After thank you we'll close this session thank, right. thank, thank, thank you sir thank you thank you sir bye bye Saravan Kumar sir we can yeah okay sir thank you Sir our team sir Sir good morning sir uh, good morning sir next week at 10:30 ah illa sir 10 o'clock the sessions all are there sir oh Uh, all uh, live le irken sir no oh. sir saranu kumar sir you can uh, give the communication saranu kumar sir saranu kumar ready better oh okay i think he has a session sir okay then you all inform me so that we can yes guide. sir yes sir uh, all the particip- uh, participants are requested to join back in the respective zoom link already the sessions are uh, going to start at uh, uh, at the 10 am uh, respective sessions uh, the faculty coordinators and session chairs are there all are first to design uh, yes sir i think mtech students are there you instruct them to go to whichever way you want they like yes sir yes sir the all the participants and mtech students uh, there are uh, three uh, three parallel tracks uh, uh, parallel parallel sessions are uh, going on so whichever session you want you can attend but uh, the participation in any one session is mandatory so you have to be there in that session uh, uh, the entire uh, day of the conference thank you all sir i think uh, we have one more uh, keynote at 1 o'clock sir in the same link okay we will join that sir
ഒന്നോ ക്ലോക്ക് യെസ് സാർ താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു സാർ താങ്ക് യു സാർ